You're listening to From the Chair, and I'm your host, Mike Hamilton. Join us each episode as we talk to athletic directors from across America. We're going to talk about topics like leadership, career development, issues of the day, and I can promise you we're going to have some fun along the way, too. So sit back, listen in, and let's dive in. Let's go. All right, welcome into today's episode. My guest today, Chrissy Raywalk, the athletic director at the University of Delaware. Chrissy, how are you doing? I'm terrific, Mike. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to some fun. Well, we're going to have a little fun along the way, and we've got some great things to discuss. You know, I, I you know this from uh, some early commentary I had with you. I'm always intrigued by unique mascots. There are a lot of tigers and things like that around the college athletic space, but there, I don't know, if there, are there any other blue hens? I know certainly uh, that's a unique mascot. Maybe give the audience a little bit of perspective on what a blue hen is. Yes, absolutely. It is unique, and I believe it's the only female mascot in the country as well. So um, that's what that's what I've been told. That, so I'm sticking with that story. Uh, a blue hen is actually the bird of the state of Delaware. Uh, they are also actually fighting birds, so you really don't want to be messing with them. Although UD, our mascot, certainly does not look like a fighting bird. The the fans, the the young ones, in fact, love having their picture taken with UD and he actually, or she, excuse me, actually just won the national championship for mascots down in Florida. They have a, believe that or not, they have a national championship for mascots. That's tremendous. Well, it is a a unique mascot and it's a, I love the colors and all that sort of thing. And I think it's a great mascot. You know, I was, I was also mentioned to you off air. um, I think it's interesting for those who don't know, you are a, an alum of the University of Michigan and obviously came from Michigan to Delaware when you became the athletic director there in 2016. And there's some irony, I guess, or, or interest in the fact that the, the Delaware football helmets and the Michigan football helmets uh, look eerily similar, but that predates you by many years. And uh, it, I, 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 would you share, just share with the audience a little bit of the history there, if you would, too. A very unique absolutely. helmet. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. And it's interesting. I didn't even realize the history, to be honest, until I got to Delaware and I did some reading and some studying myself. And in fact, the the Delaware helmet, which is the winged helmet, came from Michigan, but it was brought to Delaware from Michigan by Michigan men. So Dave Nelson and Tubby Raymond, were, who were infamous coaches, David was actually the athletic director here, both played and coached at the University of Michigan. And when they came to Delaware, they went back to Fritz Chrysler, who at the time was the football coach, and asked him, could we bring the winged helmet to Delaware? And he gave them permission. And so I think it was like in the 50s maybe uh it it got here and it's been here ever since and and i can tell you we proudly wear it and proudly represent the university of delaware and the winged helmet and um you know recognize and appreciate the history and the connection because it's very it's very real i'll say one of the things when i got here at delaware it felt very familiar and comfortable and i think part of that honestly was kind of the values and the expectations that sounds crazy but that come with the winged helmet and uh and it's very real so yeah. Certainly proud. Tremendous. Well, you, you mentioned your time. You, you came on board in 2016 as the director of athletics, and there's a lot that has happened that has been very good for the University of Delaware since your arrival. And you came in. Everybody has their unique pathway into the jobs, Chrissy, and, and you have your unique pathway. Um, and I want you to have a chance to share that and how that served you and how you lead and who you try to surround yourself with. Um, I'd I'd love for you to start by coming off the top, talking a little bit about your path into the chair and those specific things. Absolutely. And thanks, Mike. So what's interesting is, you know, half of my career, I feel like I'm on the other half. I'm headed more towards the retirement end, if you will. But half of my career has been outside of athletics. All of it has been in higher education. I've worked at three tremendous universities, the University of Michigan, Northwestern University, and now the University of Delaware. Started out as a coach, uh, which for six years at at Michigan as the assistant women's swimming coach, not a path I anticipated I was going to go down, but I would tell you it was probably one of the most valuable experiences I've had uh, in my career as as the foundational piece that really taught me how to understand and lead and be a part of a team. You know, it was one of those moments where I realized how important culture is uh, in teams and you can have the greatest talent in the world even on a team of 40 or five but if you have 
a bad culture, you're never going to ultimately achieve what you could achieve. So, you know, starting out there and really recognizing and understanding what it meant to lead teams and be a part of teams in a different way versus just a team member, if you will, um, was, was hugely important. And then transitioning out of athletics, and I think that's one of the things that has really served me well as I came back into, uh, into athletics, if you will, is really understanding and working with university leadership. Uh, I worked in development, uh, both at Northwestern and at Michigan on the administrative side. So I actually wasn't fundraising until I got back into athletics in 2011, but I was working on um, hiring and training and educating and financing uh, fundraising, uh, both at Northwestern and at Michigan. And through those relationships and that work, I was really able to better understand and work with deans on, on you know, what they wanted their fundraising operations and programs to look like. So it allowed me to really understand the academic mission and what exactly is a provost and how do they work and how is funding uh, managed across institutions. And, and to be very honest, kind of the politics of, of higher ed and how it all fits together. And so as I came to Delaware, you know, the first things that I did was actually reach out to deans and reach out to vice presidents and met with them and wanted to learn their stories and really understand who they were and why they loved what they did. And then I asked them, you know, what keeps you up at night? What are the things that you're focused on? How can I help you? And it was quite uh, remarkable the, 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 how they responded to me. They couldn't believe that that's what I was uh, coming to, to talk with them about. I think they thought I was gonna ask them for something. You know, and at the end of the day, we are a part of the University of Delaware, just like we were a part of the University of Michigan. I mean, my paycheck says the University of Delaware. I will forever be an institutional citizen. And while yes, I have ultimate responsibility for athletics and recreation, and that's my responsibility, I still, every decision we make, everything that we do, I really try and focus in on what's gonna be best for the university. And the fact that I have a really clear understanding of universities and how they work, uh, I think that's again really served me well and put put us in a position at Delaware for athletics and recreation to be successful and seen as a genuine partner in wanting to advance the university, advance the academic mission and be a really integral and integrated part. It's great. So I want to I want to pull out there are two or three themes in there that I want to I want to dive a little bit deeper on um, as I was listening to you. One is um, I don't know this is core value, strategic plan, whatever, but you, you on your, on your intro on your website, you list, I'll call it five, seven key principles that you're aspiring to, to uh, hit on. And one of those that I told you offline that really stood out to me was your work in the area of uh, student athlete welfare and wellness. And in particular, the, you, you, you talked just uh, here at the beginning about integration into the, the campus community. And as I read through that particular element of your plan, uh, I think it was noted that you have relationships on campus to help make that work with six or seven different uh, university departments, as well as some external constituent groups that you work with to provide the best possible class of service for your, your student athletes. And so I think that I'm interested and intrigued how you came about that modeling and how that's working for you at, on campus. Yeah, it's, it's actually been remarkable. And, and again, I'll come back to like, and a lot of fun. You know, we have incredibly smart people that work at Delaware and they bring a lot of experience and a lot of, um, you know, opportunity for us to be involved together. And so as we built out and really thought about what's gonna differentiate us here at Delaware, I've always talked about, I wanna be the smartest athletic department in the country. That's what we want here. And, and that isn't about the most dollars. It's about how are we using our resources? And we define resources as our time, our talent, and of course our money. But we consider all of those things as we're looking to build out strategy and then fundamentally execute on the strategy. So the reality is I, I can't hire enough people uh, or that kind of expertise here. I couldn't even do it at Michigan, right? I think in general. And, and so we, what we really did is we built out our strategy, particularly around sport performance, is we looked to the College of Health Science, we looked to the College of Engineering, we looked to the business school uh, statistics program, and we, set, we brought them together and we said, okay, here's what we're trying to build. <laughs> 
how can we work together? How can we utilize these opportunities for you from a research perspective? How can we use, utilize these opportunities from a grant perspective to help us fund some of these initiatives that we're funding? How can we help um, identify opportunities for students? You know, one of the neat things, and I'm equally as proud of this as I am of the student athlete accomplishments, is we have probably 75 to 100 students a day that are working with us across the board. Dietetics, athletic training, physical therapy, sport analytics, sports science, and the ability for us to advance their experiences here. You know, they're in the classroom learning the theory, and then they get to come with us and they test it and they grow and they learn and they help us get smarter. And, and for them to be able to then go off and, and leave University of Delaware with that type of experience, the types of careers that they are now being afforded are awesome. And they're coming back and they're telling us that. And not only that, now we actually have students that are coming here because we have these opportunities. So when I got here, we didn't have a sport nutrition program here. We didn't have anybody doing that work. So that was one of the first opportunities that we created here was we hired a, a performance nutritionist and we tied it back to the dietetics program, the academic program. And now, and they never had that, right? So they never had the opportunity to go through a sport rotation in nutrition. Now they have students, we have students, because we're doing this together, that come to Delaware because they know that that is an opportunity that they're going to have to be able to, you know, be a part of what we're building here, be a part of what we're doing here, learn and grow, and, and ultimately test, is this really what I want to be doing, right? Is this really what I want to be doing? So it's a ton of fun, I would tell you, and what's neat about it too is the professors and the faculty and the students how much more invested they become in our work and our student athletes in in ways that i i'm certain they never imagined they were going to be but we've we've gotten grants um, we've been able to implement a gps program with stat sports across all of our sport programs that's research that's being done uh, and again it's not just one sport right it's all of our sports that now are also being able to take advantage of that i mean we believe in broad-based success here at delaware i want everybody to win i want everybody to walk away with a ring um, and not just because that ring is awesome because it is and that trophy is awesome but the process that you go through and the opportunities you have to grow together uh, and represent you know a great university and a great state is is something that is really special yeah you know, I think it, it's a good reminder of, at campuses across America, the talent that is represented across so many different colleges on campus and the ability to cross the bridge from theory to practice by engaging those conversations. And, and as you referenced, I mean, so many of those folks are elite thought leaders in research and, and the such. I actually had a call this morning with someone, a professor at a Power 5 institution that really just wanted to call and talk about NIL. And one of the reasons she wanted to talk is she's very interested in the topic, but also she is trying to bring that to the classroom. And also she's trying to work with their respective athletic department to find out how her students who are in uh, brand marketing classes and sports management classes can also assist in the NIL proposition for the student athletes at that university. That collaborative work is really what the college experience is all about. And it's a separator from the professional ranks, right? 100%. And, and again, you know, there are resources that are already on your campus. They're already invested in the university that you're there representing. And, uh, and more times than not, they want to be a part of it. You know, they want to be a part of it. It's only going to help everybody. And I certainly know, you know, our board of trustees loves the, those stories and they love hearing those experiences and knowing that, you know, we're not just about wins and losses, that we really are invested in the experience of our people. And I think that's one of the things that I would just reiterate. It's all of our people. I mean, our coaches are learning from this. Our staff are learning from this. I mean, we, we, we certainly have a growth mindset here at Delaware. And like I said, if you want to be the smartest athletic department in the country, you, you have to, right? You have to be willing to tap into any and all resources and recognize you're never going to have all the answers and you need all those really smart people around you. And, and plus, you know, it's a heck of a lot more fun to do it with others. A heck of a lot more fun. Yeah. So let's stay on the theme of that thought for just a second relative to the campus engagement. And uh, I mentioned, I called you the director of athletics. You're actually so much more than that. Uh, you've got the intercollegiate experiences, which is by itself a 24-7, 365 endeavor, but you also have responsibility for campus rec. And, you know, I'm, I'm interested 
in how do you how do you arrange your time and your staffing around you to accomplish the things that you need to do in in the job that has us I'll call it the higher profile job externally speaking but yet the number of students lives that are affected by the other part of your job is also very impactful on campus and uh, I don't talk to a lot of athletic directors who have those dual responsibilities right uh, on this on this podcast there are some and I think this is a unique thing that you're doing I'm just interested in how you're managing all that yeah you know and I, I actually it's one of the reasons I took this job I actually love the fact that I have the ability to be a part of this campus in that way and you know we actually work very integrated marketing's marketing wellness is wellness uh, you know hiring people is hiring people programming is programming and I think you know you could simply make it a little bit more complicated than it needed to be by having very separate organizations and there are certainly uh, I would certainly say that there are functions that may not uh, directly align but generally speaking um, we're all working together there's a bit of a different strategy but everybody's aware of it and what we're trying to do is always find ways to connect the dots so I'll give you an example you know when I was talking about the sport performance work we're doing in wellness and thinking about nutrition and the tools and resources that we're providing to our student athletes from a nutrition perspective so how do we take that and scale that to the entire student body again it's not rocket science you know the same kind of methodology that we use with student athletes we want to use with students and you know our partners across the campus in dietetics our partners across the campus in student life they're the same partners we're using for our student athletes when we're developing blue programming which is our leadership programming so a lot of it is just mindset and how you think about it and how you approach it and i think that you know what it's really allowed us to do again is be really smart and efficient and effective with our work and how we're thinking about it and recognizing that a person is a person right it doesn't matter if they're you know an elite athlete or 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 a regular student if you will they all need sleep right they all need know they all need to know how to eat well they all need to know how to exercise and take care of themselves and certainly you know it's relative uh, in some in some ways but being able to take the things that we've learned um, from our student athlete experience on the wellness side and then scale it to the in- entire student population has been really positive and um, and again something that I'm equally as proud of and we have an incredibly competitive club sports program here which is a lot of fun and again these student athletes and I'll call them that they come from all over the country I mean I was just with us our synchronized skating team getting ready to go to nationals and there were eight women around the table that are on their leadership group from Chicago from California from Texas from Boston from Florida from Maryland all coming to the University of Delaware to be on the synchronized skating team so you know there's a lot more similarities I think than people realize I mean certainly the competitive difference is is real Um, but like I said at the end of the day they're people uh, and you know we certainly are committed to wellness here at the University and for us to be able to bring the expertise that we have uh, from the experiences we we have with athletics to the whole campus I think is pretty unique and and again probably a different way than most others think about it but it it really isn't significantly different it's just all in how you market it message it and scale it yeah so you've you've now been on campus a little over six years uh, approaching year seven and when you took the job um, and so many times this is the case you know you you have to come in as a as a, an agent of change and let's say that the the athletic program wasn't perhaps its best self relative to historical performance at the time when you got there. But by all measured since uh, you have, you can look at obviously academic performance um, on the field and court performance, coaching hires, what you're doing in the community, some of the things we've referenced here, and you've got a lot of momentum. And I'm sure along the way that didn't come without some heartache and heartburn as you had to make the changes to help give fuel to that momentum. And I know you from uh, the conversations we've had both before this call and on this call, you are committed to process and how to achieve something. So uh, maybe talk a little bit about the process for the change that has occurred at Delaware in the last six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so most people don't realize I was the sixth athletic director in eight years. And that does include interims, but I think we can all agree that interims have agendas and interims have things that they're trying to accomplish as well, as well, not good or bad, just the reality. And this is after having the same athletic director for, I think, 35 years. 
So you can imagine how challenging that was for the individuals that were within this organization. And then on top of that, there was three presidents within a period, a very short period of time as well. So a lot of change on the campus. And so, you know, at the beginning of it, for me coming in, it was really about listening and learning and really trying to best understand, uh, you know, who was here. And, and then quickly pivoting to, okay, so what are we gonna do, right, collectively? I'm, I'm here to, to, to win in all areas of, of the work that we get to do and certainly want to be able to do it together. So we went on a journey where we evaluated and, and identified our values, our mission, our vision, and really grounded ourselves in those, in those um, efforts. And it was across the board, every, every uh, person was involved in that process and we were really able to, to establish, but I would say our culture. It's since evolved, but it is one of the things that we consistently come back to. Again, our mission, our vision, and our values, it, it, it is our North Star and it allows us to make the decisions we need to make on a daily basis. We hire uh, to that. Uh, we, we grow um, in ways that, that people obviously can't even imagine. If you look back at the people that are within our organization, I have head coaches that were assistant coaches when they got here. I have deputies that were assistant ADs when I got here. You know, so the idea of investing and growing in excellence and being uh, you know, really committed to the work is, is important for us. You know, I, I always think about there's three core things in organizations. There's culture, there's strategy, and then the other piece for us is brand, which is the promise of an experience. And you can imagine those in a Venn diagram type of visual, and the sweet spot is in the middle, right? When you get it right, you've got all those things really clicking on all cylinders. The core of it, though, and I, or I think the kind of foundation of it is the culture. And you know Peter Drucker, who you may know, very influential management guru back in the day. You know he talks about culture eat strategy for breakfast, and so that's that's where we started because you could have the greatest strategy in the world, you could have all the money in the world, but if you don't have the right culture and you're all not rowing in the same direction, you're not going to achieve what you can. And if you do, I would say it's luck because <laughs> uh, it won't be yeah. sustainable. Um, and it's probably not very fun. It's probably not yeah. very fun. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, I have, I have five presidents in eight years during the time I was AD. And I would say I resonate with some of what you're saying. Um, and I would also say that when we were our best during my time at Tennessee, the culture was right. And we had, we had alignment, you know, up yep. and down the board with our, our coaches, our staff, our senior leadership on campus board. That's so critical. It is, and, and leadership continuity. I mean, when we were studying, as we were setting our, our longer term strategy here at Delaware, one of the things that we did, and it, and it is a bit of a, well, duh, but I think it really comes to life when you look at programs that have seen consistent success, is the continuity from the board to the president to the athletic director to coaches and the ability to see the success come to life in sustainable ways it's so, so important, which is why coming back to people, coming back to culture and, and making sure that you're investing in all the right things that you need to be investing in. And, and part of that too, uh, Mike, I would say is that strategic discipline component, which is so easy to say, but very difficult to do, be, especially in the world of college athletics and the changing landscape that we're all living in. It's very easy to get distracted and have shiny objects kind of floating and you're like, wait, no, squirrel, uh, versus like, no, we got to stay true to what we're here working to do. We got to stay focused on, on the work and the commitment that we've made and uh, not that you can't be nimble, of course, where you, when you need to, but you certainly need to stay focused and, and having the right people in the right positions and investing in them and, and recognizing kind of who you are uh, is, is critically important. And I'm proud of, of the work that we've done around that here at Delaware. And I think that comes back to your question of how have you been able to build the momentum and, and really continue to maintain it in the world that we're in right now. And, and it's that, I mean, when COVID happened, we focused on how do we come out of this better? How do we come out of this stronger? How do we come out of this smarter? And we were, it was hard. I mean, I'm not suggesting we stuck our head in the sand and we didn't acknowledge the hard in it. We certainly did and we embraced that, but we also really embraced the idea of, again, how do we come out smarter? How do we come out better? How do we come out stronger? Hmm. So you've now been six plus years, as we alluded to a moment ago, 
um, everybody has to eventually get their first opportunity as an athletic director. And um, I'm curious if you would speak to those who might be listening to this that are still searching for that opportunity and are hopeful and are certainly qualified and maybe even ready or past ready to be an athletic director. Um, as you reflect back on these six years, maybe some things that stand out to you that you could offer as, hey, here's some things to think about as you prepare for that step that you do not expect when you're on the other side of the table. Yeah. Eat your Wheaties. <laughs> Make sure you <laughs> eat your Wheaties. <laughs> uh, Hopefully people on this call understand what I mean when I say that, <laughs> I feel like yes. I'm old. Um, you know, what I would say is, and, and, and I, you know, I think about what, what would I do differently, right? I think about the things that, what would I do differently if I were, if I were coming back into this? Um, I think that the things that I probably would do a bit differently is give myself a little more time, be a bit more patient with myself and, um, and enjoy the journey you work really hard uh, in these jobs, and um, you know I'm I'm pretty type A, as I think most people are that sit in these chairs, and I don't think I gave myself enough time to really enjoy the first couple of years. Um, I think the other thing is that I would say from an advice perspective, and particularly with how complex college athletics and universities are becoming believe it or not, becoming. They're more complex than they were a year ago and a year before that. And I think that, that is because of how the college athletics landscape is changing, is recognizing the importance of the relationships that you have on campus and taking time to care and feed for them. I came to that naturally, like I mentioned, because I'm a university citizen and I spent more of my time outside of athletics than inside of athletics when I came into this role. And then the last thing is, is just also recognize kind of the dependencies. Again, this comes back to the complexity of our work. You know, we talk about this a lot here at Delaware, and I do believe it's one of the things that differentiates us is, you know, we're working on one human when I think about athletics, like it's one person, but we have all of these people that are circling around this one person. We've got to be the ones that work together to connect the dots that really leverage each other for the opportunities to help that person become the best versions of themselves. We can't expect them to be translating all of that on their own. And, mm -hmm. and we have to work together in the very best ways possible. We have to become the best versions of ourselves to be the best, to allow that student athlete to become the best version of themselves, if that makes sense. And, and that takes work, right? And you have to work at it every day. And, and I don't mind that um, because it's that important because at the end of the day, that, that's who we're here serving and supporting when we're talking about athletics. And compromising on that is, in my mind and in our world, not acceptable. And again, yeah. we're not perfect at it. We don't get, you know, we're, we're certainly not perfect at it, but we certainly work at it every day. And so encouraging people to remember that as they're stepping into this role, uh, I think is, is also something that I would suggest. So as we begin to wrap up, I, I know you've got a lot going on and, um, you know, I'd like for you to share what you're currently working on that you believe uh, can help advance the cause of the university and the athletic program, because anybody that listens to this podcast is going to understand that you're working on something all the time, right? Uh, you are. And uh, it's been, it's been a great conversation, but tell me what you're, what you're looking forward to, what you're working on now uh, to continue to move the needle. Yeah, so one of the things that we're working on that I'm actually particularly excited about is um, we're working on kind of centralizing or creating a comprehensive business engagement program for uh, athletics and recreation. So we have a lot of different opportunities for engagement across all of our, uh, across the board, you know, rentals for facilities, selling of tickets, sponsorship, gifts. Um, engagement with em employees of companies and programming, our coaches going out and speaking to different companies. I have two ice arenas that we rent and we have career opportunities that our student athletes can be hired for, internships, et cetera, et cetera. So you can imagine the inventory that we have available and we have all of these different types of businesses that we engage with in each of those different moments or each of those different areas 
but it's not comprehensive, it's not con connected, and it's not aligned. And that's simply because we, we just haven't done that. And so we're really not maximizing or optimizing the opportunities and the experiences that the businesses have available to us and we have available to them. And so we're working on organizing ourselves in a way that allows for a business to come in and connect in one way and then ultimately be able to scale it across all of the different opportunities and expose them to all of those things. NIL is also a piece of that, right? When you have a relationship with a business, and I would say what we're really focused on is what's that partnership with that business? How do we win together? It's kind of the, the mantra for us now is how do we unify and elevate? Uh, and, and how do we do that in a way where everybody wins? And everybody has the opportunity to maximize uh, the relationship and the partnership uh, and and you know also have fun with it. I think the, 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 the other component to that that I'm excited about is particularly in a state like Delaware where we you know we represent the state. When you when we're competing in Houston or California or you know you name it, we've got Delaware across our chest, right? That is the state of Delaware. And so our ability to connect with businesses all across the state, and ensure that they feel that pride and that connection and then the people that are uh, you know buying their products or coming to the restaurants or you, you name it um, you know they feel that whether they went to the University of Delaware or not they see UD they see the blue hen and they think they do it right we're proud of what they do and we you know we want to be fans we want to invest and we want to support our um, you know our flagship university and Delaware is, um, you have a very strong corporate community in the state, right? I mean, we do because a lot of, I mean, there's so many businesses that have corporate headquarters there from around the United States. We do, we do. And, and I would say though, the local is powerful. I mean, the pride here is insane. You know, a lot of people have said, what's the difference between Michigan and Delaware? It's the numbers of alums uh, that, that, that Michigan has, but it's, it, you know, passion is passion. And commitment is commitment. And what I have found here in the six years, and it's only grown, honestly, is how passionate and committed people are to the success of our university, our student athletes, and how passionate they are about what we do here. It's really cool. That's great. Well, this is a conversation that has moved along quickly, as I knew it would, based upon the things that we had slated to talk about. And um, I know you, you do have a lot going on. And so the idea that you would come on and spend 35 minutes with me and share some of your learnings and uh, things that are going on there with our audience is, is really meaningful. So thanks, thanks for joining me, Chrissy. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Mike. Thank you very much and uh, go hens. All right. So you've been listening to From the Chair. I'm your host, Mike Hamilton. We're here every week across all audio platforms and certainly on YouTube for the video content. We produce new episodes every Wednesday, but you can also get those uh, episodes, previous episodes uh, in the catalog, uh, regardless of how you listen to the, the podcast. So we we'll hope you join us. And I hope you've enjoyed today's episode with University of Delaware Director of Athletics, Chrissy Raywalk. And we'll see you next week. Take care.